Alright guys, uh, this is going to be my next project and I believe there is one or two others going to be building similar um, along with me so what we're actually looking at here is most of the bits and pieces we need to make the Badini Energizer or uh, this uh, looped <coughs> excuse me motor generator um, setup so uh, in this one here this is uh, John's own drawing as far as I know he um, posted it along with one of his um, posts on one of his forums and you can see here he has a 12 volt motor um, connected to a shaft a large flywheel um, and then we have a rotor here with uh, magnets on it six magnets and apparently all north facing out <coughs> now i don't believe this bit still holds true with the all north facing out after some years of experimenting um, there does not seem to be any advantage in having the north field facing out all the time. What that does end up doing is polarising the um, cores within each coil um, and you end up with the core itself becoming a uh, weak magnet over time. If you alternate your magnets then you don't get this happening. So I do believe that now they use an alternating uh, pattern for their magnets on their flywheels. A bit windy. And so of course we will be doing the same. With six magnets and six coils looking at the picture. They seem to be hooked in series. And uh, in comes out of our uh, energizer. And we have a cap across the output, but I do not see a bridge rectifier in this diagram. So perhaps that is missing, and also does anyone know what this is? A circle with an arrow at uh, 10 o'clock through it. And of course, switch one was put in there to uh, disconnect uh, the energizer from the battery because apparently the battery voltage has kept going up too high so whether that's the case or not I guess we'll find out he uses a commutator here as you can see pictured here to um, time things so as the motor shuts off and then the energy stored in the cap is dumped into the battery uh, we won't be using a commutator in my case, I believe another builder is going to be using a commutator setup. Um, we'll be using a relay that's electronically controlled, which I don't have here in the picture. I will just get it. Okay, so. Um, this is our dual pole double throw relay we'll be using. Um, it's uh, 400 amps, which will be quite ample for the job. And you can see that it already has the uh, resistor capacitor across the um, coil. And this is to arrest the inductive kickback when um, this coil is switched off. So uh, while it's switched off, two of the contacts are connected and when we energise this coil, those two become disconnected and the other two become connected. This is out of an old um, electric car or truck, small truck they use in warehouses to tow uh, things around with. So um, that was actually the forward and reverse um, relay. So that's the one we'll be using. So that goes there with our goodies. Um, 
and of course the caps I don't have here at the moment. I do have caps, I have variable different size caps and uh, we'll be putting in place. So um, this is his version 2 we're going to be building. Um, you can see it's a 12 volt motor, 12 volt battery. Um, if we look at the latest schematic, we see here much the same thing. Um, we have a little bit more information on the coils, six coils, 250 turns each. Um, the full wave bridge rectifier has been added, but this time it was missing the cap, which I've added in myself, right there. Um, and as you can see here, we have that relay that uh, we have down there in this situation. And it's called the switching controller. So I have the controller circuit, which allows us to adjust the speed which the relay switches and it also allows us to adjust um, the duty cycle of each side so we can have maybe the motor on for 50% and then 50% will be the return back to the battery while the motor switched off or we can go 60-40, uh, 70-30, whatever we need to do. So that's uh, one of the joys of doing the switching electronically uh, rather than having a commutator with a commutator you're stuck with what you have but uh, using a, a relay like they have here and um, control that relay by a uh, controller circuit we can have all types of variations um, the energizer I'm using the energizer was just a magneto, which is uh, basically just a uh, flywheel with, with a magnet in it and um, coils. So uh, there's many different types of magnetos. Um, snap magnetos they used to use in automobiles and that, and then there was uh, coil shorting magnetos used in old um, telephone systems to make the phone ring. Um, this case. Our magneto is going to be this uh, smart drive motor from a washing machine which make excellent generators. Very low cogging. This one is three phase and um, what this is going, we're only going to be drawing off of one phase but it will allow us to um, make each phase different in that uh, one phase we can leave all that phase hooked up in series so we get a very high voltage. Um, another phase we can split that phase in half and um, parallel connect the coils in that phase which will halve our voltage but double our current. And in the third phase we can split it into four pieces um, which will once again um, halve our voltage. Um, We'll reduce the voltage to one quarter of that of the complete wound phase um, and increase our current. So uh, that's going to allow us to use different caps and um, charge those caps up to different voltages before we dump into the battery. So um, we have our controller circuit, I have the caps, we have our relay, we have our relay controller, we have our magneto. Um, over there the rusty old flywheel I'm going to clean up um, that of course is going to be used as our flywheel here that one's actually a little heavier than 20 pounds now you will note here um, on both schematics it says a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt DC motor um, but I read in some comments by Peter Lindemann that um, they were using a 24 volt aircraft starter motor. Now this one we have here is not an aircraft starter motor however it is a 24 volt series wound motor. So um, Peter said it needs to be a series wound and not a permanent magnet motor because apparently with permanent magnet motors you get drag um, due to the current flowing through the motor because the windings are all interconnected so you get a drag down on the motor when the motor is switched off. 
I have found that that is not the case. Um, and I've tested this by getting a 12 volt motor with a uh, small flywheel on it, spinning it, spinning it up with a uh, little Dremel to a certain RPM, timing the run down time until it stops. I then cut all the windings so every winding in the motor was open, carried out the same test, and the wind down time was exactly the same. So um, I have to disagree with that, that there is a uh, drag on the uh, DC permanent magnet motor when the power is disconnected because the uh, power running through the coils is in a complete loop and results in um, a zero. So uh, whatever... Um, Peter was talking about there, I'm not sure, but I did not see that effect in here. We don't have to worry about that because we are using a 24 volt series wound motor. This one is one horsepower. Um, 24 volts is a little easier to work with. The higher the voltage, the lower the current, the smaller the device size we have to use. And this here will be more suited to 24 volts than 12 because um, it has a very high voltage output and uh, low current. So what we're going to do next is um, make up the frame and um, assemble all this. I do have to go to the bearing shop and buy the other half of our coupling which I seem to have lost. This one is for the motor. We need the other half that goes on that shaft there which is a 25mm shaft to couple the two together. So we're going to build up the frame, get this all set up that's going to be in the next video. This one is just to run through what we're doing, which is that. Um, and uh, of course the original picture once again. This is John's um, energizer, motor generator, loot, you beaut thing. So we're going to see how we go. Um, like I said, next video I will have the frame built most of this mounted and um, we will take it from there. So this one is a 24 volt system like um, Peter Lindemann stated that theirs was. Why John has 12 volts here I'm not sure and also 12 volts in there but apparently it was 24 volts. Uh, I don't see a difference 12 volts, 24 volts doesn't really matter. But um, we have all the gear we need to build this machine, so we're going to put it together and uh, run it up, see how we go, and then we're going to start making modifications needed and see if we can get anywhere with this thing. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next video, guys.